Genesis 13, 7, And there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock, the Canaanites and the Perizzites. Uh, and them that dwelt in the land, Abraham said to Lot, Please let there be no strife between you and me and between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are brethren. Is not the whole land before you? Please separate from me. If you take the left, I will go to the right. If you go to the right, I will go to the left. Lot lifted his eyes and saw the plain of Jordan. It was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah like the garden of the Lord, like a land of Egypt as you go toward Zoar. Lot chose for himself the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated from each other. Father, thank you for your Holy Spirit this morning. Touch us in a wonderful way. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. And you can be seated. Amen. Brethren, if you can get the projector on, get the screen down, get that set up for our service this morning. And uh, I want to speak to you today on stay on the high ground. Stay on the high ground. Everybody say that. Stay on the high ground. You know, when there was a choice, Lot looked with his eyes. And Abraham, his uncle, said, choose you out wherever you want to go. And Abraham said, I give you the choice. So Lot chose the well-watered plains of the Jordan. And when he looked down there, he saw, you know, all those palm trees and the lush vegetation and foliage and and, and the water and the prosperous big huge cities. There were two huge cities there, 250,000 people or more in each of those cities. And, and he looked at that and he thought, well, this is a no-brainer. This is, this is obvious what I should take. It's obvious since my uncle, you know, has been watching over me and our herds are growing and we're fighting with each other. My uncle has given me my choice. And so he chose to go from the hilly craggy bluffs, the no pasture, the barren wasteland of the hills, and go down in the well-watered, what it looked like, prosperous valley. And indeed it was prospering. Indeed it was. It says that it was like the garden of God, and it looked so inviting. It was like, this is obvious, this is where I should go. But I want you to note this something today. If you're going to make heaven your home, you can never choose what your eyes tell you. If you do, you will end up in a pit of fire because your eyes always deceive you about spiritual issues in your life. Well, it looks good. Yeah, but is it good? You know, it reminds me of Las Vegas. You drive down the strip at night and it's all illuminated and lit up and it looks so enticing, so beautiful, not knowing that it's a habitation of demons. They don't call it sin city for nothing. They don't call it Lost Wages Nevada for nothing. <laughs> it looks good on the outside, but full of, inside it's full of darkness. And whenever man uses his natural eyes, when, when Eve used her natural eyes and began to look on what God had told her no about already, her eyes led her astray. The Bible says that the eyes are the windows to the soul. And your eyes, your natural eyes will never lead you towards God. They always lead us away from God. The Bible says about Paul, he had a young, young man who was with him named Demas. And he said, Demas hath forsaken me having loved this present world. What happened to Demas, the young man? He was with the greatest preacher of the New Testament. And yet he backslid and went out in the world. Why? His eyes started looking across the fence. And he started looking at what looked like so good. And as he partook of it, he ended up leaving the Apostle Paul. And we don't know whatever happened to Demas, but he went back into the world. The Bible says that Abraham knew something. Abraham, though he was up there in that dry hills and up there with cactus and up there with no pasture and up there, he was already wealthy man. For God was his source and Abraham knew that. And Abraham knew that it didn't matter if he dwelt in the valley or on the mountaintop, that God was his source. And that no matter how dry and rugged the land was, God was blessing him and he was already wealthy and was bound to get more wealthy. And I want to say to every one of us today, we may be in a dry and barren place right now. And 
And in the natural, you may look around and you may be in lack and you may be having to believe God for things and you may be suffering right now. And in the natural, it may not look good, but I want you to lift your eyes up unto the Lord and recognize that you are rich, you are blessed, you are honored because you are in Christ today. Hallelujah. You're not at the beach. You're not at a restaurant. You're not at your mother-in-law's house. You're in the house of the living God. You have placed God first on your Sunday list and you are in the house of God you have felt the presence of the Lord and even though you may be in trials and testing this morning God is your source God is your rewarder God is your high tower God is your rock in a weary land God is your help in the time of struggle He is your light in the middle of the darkest night and God is our source and every one of us are rich in Christ and we have been seated in heaven places and our home is not bellflower but it's the streets of Jerusalem having a mansion in heaven I may be going through trials but I am blessed of God I am rewarded by God I am walking in the divine favor and blessing of God and no man gave it to me and no man can take it away from me there's not a devil in hell that can take it away there's not a trial or a test that can take it away wherever you are if you're walking with God you're blessed today somebody say amen your food is different your house is different your car is different your body is different your eyes are different everything about you is under the blessing of almighty God he said I'll bless you in the city and bless you in the field I'll bless you when you go in and when you come out I'll make you the head and not the tail I'll make you above and not beneath I will go with you wherever you go it's good enough to know that my God is with me and I may not have much in this world but what I have is blessed Blessed. What I have is honored of God. What I have is under the anointing of God. Somebody come on, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. I really believe that. I believe the cars we drive are blessed. I have an old car. It's got 258,000 miles on it. It's never had any engine or transmission work. It just keeps running. I was advised by two or three different separate mechanics through the years to just give it up and turn it into the junkyard. Even Pastor Mafoy was here a few years ago. And he said, Doug, put this car in the home. It's too old to be out anymore. But I can tell you that I keep driving and it keeps running. You know what I believe? I believe the hand of God's on my vehicle. I believe God keeps it running. I believe God gives it longevity. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. I played tennis against a guy the other day. And he said to me, how old are you anyway? After I had beaten him. And I said, well, how old are you? He said, I'm 46. I said, I'm 62. He said, you lie. You're not 62. I said, I am. I'm every day 62. I was born 1950, September the 19th. He said, I can't believe it. You don't look like you're in your late 40s or early 50s. He said, how did you do that? I said, it's Father, Son, and Spirit Incorporated living on the inside of me. I got God on me. I have God's presence on me. I'm walking in the light as he is in the light. And we have fellowship one with another. Don't tell me living for God doesn't pay off. Don't tell me there's no advantages in serving my God. My God blesses him. His people. He blesses us. He blesses our basket. He blesses our store. Somebody say amen. amen. I believe that. Amen. Abraham knew something. He knew God was his source. And Lot chose a tragic choice. He chose what his eyes saw. Let me tell you, your senses, your five senses will never carry you into heaven. You better learn to crucify your flesh and quit giving into it. Somebody say amen. Well, he's so good looking. I just can't help it. Oh, well, you need to pray. You're being led by your hormones, not the Holy Ghost. <laughs> amen. That's right. But do they walk with God? What's their relationship with God? When I was a single evangelist for five years traveling, I had all kinds of women wanted to date me. In every church, they lined up. People got saved. I always got women saved. Amen. People got women got saved. And, uh, you know, they weren't getting God. They were, they, were, they were seeking after me. But when I was looking for a wife, 
and I saw my wife the first time, I said, ooh, that looks nice. I like that merchandise there. But I asked my aunt, I said, what kind of relationship with God does that Brenda girl have? I said, I like her looks, but I, I'm not going to go out with her unless you tell me, what, what is she like? And my uncle said, oh, listen, of all the girls in our church, she'd make the best preacher's wife. I said, why? She's always in church. So her mom and dad miss a lot, but she's faithful. She, if her mom and dad get up and say, we're not going to go, we were at the, you know, at the weekend with her, out at the boat too long, we're not going to go to church, said she gets those little brother and sister up and takes them to church, said she teaches Sunday school class, she sings in the choir, she's always in the altars. I thought, now I'm interested. Somebody say, man. I was being led by the Holy Ghost, not my hormones. Well, I was being led by both, my hormones and my Holy Ghost. But keep the Holy Ghost in front of the hormones. Somebody say, man. Come on. Hallelujah. And I want you to know that you can't find God's will with your eyeballs. You've got to have to find, you have to have spiritual vision. And Lot, it wasn't long till Lot had lived there and he was carried away captive by four kings that raided Sodom and Gomorrah. And what did Uncle Abraham do? He mounted up a posse on a bunch of horses and camels and took off after them. Can you imagine the audacity of that? I thought about that when I read that and studied it. The audacity of one man to go after four kings that had raided that city and carried off the plunder. What a guy. What a guy. What a guy. He, he had the audacity to go after four kings that had raided and he went and he captured Lot and brought him back. And I'm going to tell you that is a picture of a man that stays separate out of Sodom, keeps himself up high on the hill, stays in the high places with God. And because he's in a high place with God and he has a clean conscience and a clear heart and an anointed soul, he can rescue those that are down in Sodom being, being tormented and captured and carried away captive. Because Abraham carried away uh, his nephew Lot and brought him back. He brought him back. And folks, when we stay on the hill and we stay separate from the world and we stay holy unto God, we have a prayer life. We can go in the spirit world and capture the powers of darkness. We can capture sons and daughters and nephews and nieces that have given themselves over to the low life and they're down in the valley in the slums. But we can go by the Spirit of God and capture them and bring them out of slavery. God is looking for intercessors today. I said God is looking for intercessors today. You can't bring anybody out of sin if you're in sin yourself. You can't bring somebody out of Sodom if you're in Sodom. But if you're up on the hill with Abraham and you're trusting in the living God and you stayed out and away, somebody say amen. amen. I'm going to tell you, we are known as Christians not as much for what we do, but as what we don't do. Our lives are to be separate from the world. We're supposed to live different, act different, walk different, spit white. Somebody say, man, you got a can of skulls. You need to bring it to the altar this morning. Lay it on this altar and let us anoint you and pray for you. And you can walk out of here. And the only thing you'll ever chew again is bubble gum. It'll give you cancer in your throat and cancer in your lips. These kind of habits, these kind of things. Somebody say amen. We're supposed to be separate from the world. We're not supposed to act like they act. There's got to be a difference in the life of the Christian. There's got to be a difference today. I don't care if it's popular or unpopular. I'm going to preach it to the day I die. Because he said, be holy as I am holy. Come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing. And I will be your God and you will be my children. Young people, you don't have to sell out to a world system that's gone down into Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm telling you, you can rise up by the Spirit and come out on top of the hill and your light can shine in darkness. There is a difference in the people of God and the people of this world. There is a difference in those that walk in righteousness and those who walk in the world. There's not just more. There's more difference than a bumper sticker and a Jesus pin on our lapel. There is more difference than even carrying a Bible. There is a life that has been radically changed and transformed by the power of Almighty God. Somebody say amen for this today. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. Amen.
Hallelujah. Abraham was able to rescue Lot because he wasn't down there in Sodom. Hallelujah. Stay on the high ground. Don't get tired of the disciplines that God has placed in your life. Jesus promised you that you're going to have to be disciplined. He said you'll have to take up a cross and follow me. He promised you warfare like our sister taught this morning. Warfare is a natural part of living for Jesus. The devil hates you. I'm glad the devil hates me. I'm glad he opposes me. I'm glad he slaps me upside the head. I'm glad he whispers in the night. I'm glad he wakes me up out of a sleep and tries to throw demons at me. It's good for me to fight the devil because I learn how much more powerful the power of the Holy Spirit is than the powers of darkness. Uh, we got to quit being intimidated and afraid of the devil. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. When is the church going to rise up with the anointing of God and tell the devil, shut up and sit down and make the devils leave us alone? Instead of running and hiding from them. Amen? Hallelujah. Stay to the high ground. Don't get tired of the disciplines of the life that God's called you to live up high. Up in, up in the high place is protection in, with God. Down in the valley there's danger. Up high there's anointing. Down in the valley there's slavery and oppression. The Bible says that Lot vexed his righteous soul from day to day with a filthy conversation of the wicked of those twin cities. He was vexed every day. With the filthy conversation. Today we are sinking in a sea of self-indulgence. Where self has become God. We need to go back up to the high places. Hallelujah. And if you're on the high place, don't you listen to the devil. Don't you give in one inch. Don't you move one centimeter. Don't go back. Don't go back down the mountain. Don't give up your ground. If God gave you a healing and the devil is attacking you, you hold on to your healing. Grab your Bible and get a bottle of oil. And go after the powers of darkness. Somebody say amen. amen. I heard Pat Robertson say this week that a friend of his felt a disease coming on his body. And I'm not sure which, which it was, but there was a, a, a disease and he could feel it trying to manifest in his body. And he said he anointed himself with oil. And he told the devil, I refuse this disease. I refuse its manifestation in my body. I refuse its right to exist in my body. I am given over to God and my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And devil, you're not putting this disease on me. I refuse its cause and effect in my life. I refuse its manifestation. And he said that spirit of that sickness left his body. I tell you, there's a lot of sickness that is demonic inspired and influenced and greater is he the Holy Spirit living on the end you need to rise up and let the power of God flow out of your life and throw off those spirits somebody say amen hallelujah hallelujah glory to God where's our faith is it in the doctors is it in our medicine or is it in God Hallelujah. We need to be like the man, you know, was going to pray for the guy. He said, what do you want to do? He said, I want to lose 100 pounds. He said, well, grab your pants. I'm going to pray. <laughs> Give us some faith, Lord. Hallelujah. Stay on the high ground. Today we're sinking, and we don't want to be sinking. Somebody say amen. amen. We want to be aggressive against the powers of darkness. We want to be aggressive against whatever the devil's trying to fight with us. If he, he slaps you, slap him back. <laughs> the Bible says resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Resist the devil. Go on the attack. So oh, really, devil, that's what you want? I remember when I had a stronghold in my life and God was delivering me and I went through all kinds of torments. I'd turn up praise music so loud it was rattling the walls of the house. I mean, it would rattle the plaster. I sounded like a full-fledged one of these guys that got this boom, 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 boom in their cars, you know. Man. I tell you what, I love that. I think when you turn the volume up for God, the devil can't hang on long. <sighs> Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. I told the church this a few months ago. I pulled up, had my top down on my car and I, in my Audi, and I pulled up beside this guy, and he had his boom, 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 going real loud. And so I had on some Holy Ghost praise music. I think it was Sister Linda's CD she gave me of the, the guy in... Kentucky and he was singing and screaming and they were playing real fast Holy Ghost music and so I just turned that it's a Sony 
stereo in that thing. And I thought, you know, I never have checked this thing out to see what it'll do. He said it had 12 speakers. I just turned it up louder and louder and louder. I turned it as loud as it would go. I'm telling you, I thought I had hearing damage. It was so loud, but it was such a good stereo that it didn't distort at all. It didn't distort. All. It just blasted. It blasted. I was sitting there with this guy, and the guy next to me was going... And we were having a contest. And the guy rolled his window down and said, cool, dude, cool. 